Hi, this is Misha, and in this video we're going to go over the history of the Czechoslovakian, today Czech, Scorpion submachine gun, or in some cases machine pistol, series. So on the table, we have a semi-auto Czech small arms, VZ-61, this is the classic version. Good. We also have a CSA version of the Scorpion VZ-82, at least the second version. We might call it the CZ-82. We'll get to that in a bit. target but I hit my head with the casings. These are both first generation and then finally we have the one that probably most people are familiar with. This is the CZ Evo 3. This is the S1 semi-auto variant Scorpion and this is a third generation. Of course where'd the second generation go? Well we'll get to that. Now we have a shooting video with these, so if interested, give that a go. This is the history boring one, so if you want to go to sleep or have something to do or, I don't know, need to change the litter box or dinner's in the oven, and check this one out. For more interesting stuff, check out the shooting one. <laughs> so where did this begin? This is actually not just an influential firearm in Czechoslovakia, not even just in the comm block, but in the world of firearms in general. This is really the forerunner of the personal defense weapon, PDW. And it's an outgrowth of the true machine pistol. Now, Czechoslovakia became communist, as you know. And in the 1950s, the Communist Party was starting to really centralize everything. Before that, it had a quite a very uh, successful, very well-advanced small arms development and uh, creation industry. But around 1955, the Communist Party essentially outlawed private development, private manufacturing, and all kind of conglomerated under Constructa Bruno which is really what we would call CZ today. There was some other outgrowth in small areas in Prague as well, but most of it was in Bruno. Now, there was development of another submachine gun, a traditional full-size submachine gun, which was known as the SA VZ-23 and 25 originally, and then later the VZ-2426. These would fire 9x19 Luger and 7.6 Dutokrev, respectively. For that, check out a different video, and we'll try to link it. It's definitely in the playlist. That was their full-size submachine gun. Now, interestingly, their assault rifle, the SA VZ-58, was nearly a submachine gun in and of itself. Really the way Czech military classified it was as a submachine gun. So technically they had two submachine guns full size in inventory in the 50s. This explains why the Scorpion evolved the way it did. So they had two full size guns firing the 30 caliber of the day. However, the Ministry of the Interior 
wanted a small concealable submachine gun to issue to police both uh, private security basically uh, secret communist police at the time and plainclothes police officers they also wanted it for frankly spies and counter spy James Bond type stuff you know people who needed something capable of select fire but that needed to be hidden or at least lightweight and easy to carry so again you see where the PDW kind of comes in although no one really used that term at the time it wanted it to be 32 caliber which in Europe is known as 7.65 Browning 7.65 by 17, which was a very successful police cartridge and even military cartridge during World War I and even into World War II. Now, the Minister of the Interior used the CZ, excuse me, the VZ-50 handgun based on the Walther PPK, so they were already also stocking the ammunition. It made sense. That's why this gun was created in what we would consider kind of a weak caliber. It made sense for them. Plus, it is light recoiling, and carrying extra ammunition is, is not so much a problem. In 1958, they basically laid out what they wanted the new gun to be. First, it needed to be in that 32 caliber. Second, it needed to weigh one kilogram to about 1.2, one and a quarter kilograms. So you're basically looking at somewhere around two and a half pounds, give or take. They wanted it to have a folding stock and when folded be about 10 inches and with the stock deployed somewhere between 17 and 18 inches. They needed it to be good out to about 100 meters, so relatively long range for this size. They needed it to be select fire, semi and full. And they needed it to be able to take two different size magazines. A 10 round, well let me back up, an 8 to a 10 round, so a compact mag for holster carry and conceal carry, and a larger 20 to 25 round for more submachine gunny type use. They had some other things, but you get the idea. They wanted it small, powerful, light, but they needed decent range. Well, Keep in mind, 1958, the VZ-58 is just coming online and still under final development. And the UK-59 machine gun is still under development and it would not be adopted for another year and go into production for another couple of years. So the main folks at Bruno, today what we would call CZ, were pretty busy. Therefore, the design, at least the preliminary design of this gun fell to a relative unknown. Now, I'm going to butcher his name because my speech literally can't even read some of the characters. I apologize. But you know who I'm talking about. My speech calls him Rabetet, but that can't be right because their space is missing. But you know who I'm talking about. He was a relatively young gentleman. He was, before, he was born before World War II, became an adult during that war, and was working on his masters and PhD during the 1950s. He was a mathematician, loved figuring, that kind of thing. He was also in arms development since around 1948. Now he was never a team leader, never really came up with designs, but he worked with other people. He was a good team member. He was the math guy on the team, kind of the math nerd. Designing the new gun, codenamed Scorpion, fell to him, and it was a good call. He really took the specifications to heart, did the math, and came up with the best solution. He even used it as his doctoral thesis, successfully I might add, at the Prague Academy, and was awarded his doctorate. He would go on to develop it, speaking in 1959, early in that year. And by the middle of 1961, he had a fully working, fully realized prototype, so much so that the Communist Party itself adopted it, or authorized its adoption, I should say, as the SA VZ 61 
Scorpion. This gun here, more or less, at least the full auto version. So what did he come up with? Really there wasn't much competition. This was pretty much the gun that was going to be developed. He was very close to the weight requirements. It's just a little heavier, just a smidge. Close enough for government work, literally. It is a little bit longer, but really 10 inches folded and 17 to 7, 18 inches unfolded is unrealistic. I mean, that would give such a tiny length of pull. So it exceeded the length requirements by about three or four inches, but still was very effective. It's about 20 inches with the stock out, and I believe around 14 with it folded. Sorry, I should have looked before I started, guys, but eh, it's okay. It fed from two types of magazine. For the compact mag, he was able to deliver a double stack, double feed, 10 rounder. Very nice. Not only is it double stack, double feed, it has a last round pullback, which is relatively advanced for the late 50s, early 60s, especially on a gun like this. Now there is no release, which is a common theme with check guns, but all you have to do is drop the mag. Now if I were to put a fresh mag in that was loaded, all I have to do is that. And if I want to hold it open, I just pull this back and press this lever here. See? And actually, even more interesting, if I've got it open, let's say we do this, kind of a mechanical neat feature it has here. It's open, right? Let's put it on safe. Boop. Just drop our mag, still open. This is locked in the up position by the safety, so I cannot release it forward. Quite a neat safety feature. Dude. There we go. As you observe, this fires from a closed bolt. This isn't something they did for the semi-auto. The full auto fired from a closed as well. This was to give it that accuracy. One area he exceeded the requirements this is actually good out to 150 meters, thanks to being a closed bolt, having a fixed barrel. This is four and a half inches long. We have an adjustable front sight, and we have a notch rear sight, which with basically close and long range settings. I think they're actually set at either 50 and 150 or 75 and 150, but basically you've got a close range notch and a long range and both sides are protected as you see. We have essentially ambidextrous cocking. We have these knobs here on each side. This keeps it very compact, but they're still quite easy to grasp because they're serrated. Standard trigger guard, standard trigger. On the military version, there'd be a three-way selector here, safe, and we'd have single shot and then 20 marking full auto. We have a wooden pistol grip, one piece, with a nut on the bottom. Inside this grip on the military gun would be a rate reducer. Now interestingly, the rate reducer was kind of the brainchild of uh, Mr. Cermak, who was instrumental in developing the VZ-58. So he did contribute at least some theory to this rate reducer. And there's quite a few online illustrations. And if there's a good picture, I'm sure Jay can toss one up here. But essentially it's a plunger and spring that's weighted that when the bolt comes back, it initially retards it for an nth of a second before letting it go forward. Without it, this would have a crazy rate of fire. This is already a very fast firing gun, but without that rate reducer, it, you would blow through this 10 round mag in a second and even the extended mag he made here the 20 rounder you would still go through very very quickly these would be issued typically with one 10 round mag and four 20s the 20s carried in these belt pouches two in per pouch 
and the tin inside the gun inside the holster. Now this also had a stock, we'll look at it more in just a second, on this other gun here. This of course being a semi-auto pistol, it's got a brace adapter from Checkpoint. Again, for more on that semi-auto stuff, check out our other video. Very easy disassembling. We've got a captive front pin. That's all it is. That hinges open. You can see our guts in here. Just a simple hammer system. The rate reducer would be in here if we were a full auto. And home. Our bolt is just a large bolt. We have two recoil spring, so dual guide rod. It does wrap around the barrel a bit in the front, which is kind of a takeoff from the Czech VZ26. It's easy to take the bolt out. These knobs are just in notches back here. Just pull it to the back and pull the knobs out and the bolt comes out. We even have a spring-loaded firing pin, and we have dual extractors, which is pretty neat. As from the firing videos, I'm sure you've seen, these things fire straight, or eject straight up, which is interesting. <laughs> the barrel is pinned in to the stamped over upper receiver. The lower is a machined bit, so we have two very modern construction really very very nice gun frankly these are very reliable they were a little complex to mass produce by the standards of the early 60s but they did it so these were adopted in 1961 and full-scale production was set up at the bruno factory what we know today as cz by 1963 the production line was ready to go the Ministry of the Interior first ordered about 12,000 and then up that order to over 70,000. And by this point, the Czech army was becoming interested. It wanted these initially for its intelligence units, recons, but after some time, it expanded that and would purchase these in very large numbers, issuing them to recon units, of course. Uh, special Forces would often find a use for something like this. And uh, guard type units, border guards and other things, and any kind of military police type. It's just a very effective gun for its certain niche. The first production run would last until about 1966. And by that time, the Czech Ministry of uh, was it, Foreign Affairs would their uh, exports would also purchase some to uh, sell or trade off to other communist allies during this first run we would produce over a hundred thousand vz61s so quite a successful for a submachine gun of the 60s they would let the production line kind of set idle for a bit and then they would do a second run from 1973 to 1976 building over 50,000 additional guns, many of these going to export, including Yugoslavia, many more going to the Army and the Czech police. By this time, the Czech prison systems, prison guards, were starting to be issued these. Definitely would control a riot. And again, they would let the production line kind of go, um, go inert. Then in 78 and 79, they would do another run of about 40, 45,000. So a little smaller each time. And again, going a lot to export more to Yugoslavia, who would actually eventually purchase a license to manufacture their own version domestically. And again, more to the military and so on and so forth. So, you know, we're, we're at about 200,000 guns by 1980 produced. Not a very, you know, nice, nice, neat number for what this is. Now, while the standard version was in 32, they did not stop there. They at least played around with the notion of doing other designs. 
As soon as the VZ61 was going into production, its designer worked on versions and other calibers for export. The VZ64 prototype was in 380, 9x17 Browning, 9mm curves, very popular cartridge in Europe. Then the VZ65, very similar, was in 9x18 Makarov. This would basically be the first Czech gun chambered for the 9x18 PM cartridge. And neither of these would really go much of anywhere. They were just prototypes, but the idea was planted. While we've got this out, you see the stock here. Folding stock, it's got a little squeeze. It just squeezes open, very quick to deploy. This one's a little tight because of the fatter barrel being uh, for the uh, threaded there, but you get the idea. Not only was that there, to make it an even better pistol, it's detachable, fitting in a dovetail. Now the designer would pass away suddenly at a quite a young age in 1970. So work really didn't go forward for quite some time, even though these were still in production, until the early 80s. Czechoslovakia would finally adopt the Makarov cartridge in general with the VZ-82 pistol. And then they would try to develop the VZ-82 Scorpion, which is an updated version of the VZ-65. They redid the stock, they redid the barrel, they went to a more modern polymer grip, not dissimilar to this one. A few other little changes. Again, this never left prototype stage, much like the VZ-65, but the idea was still planted. Really though, by the 80s, the original design was, was pretty well over. As communism fell in 1989 and 1990, CZ was becoming more and more privatized and tried to make the design successful. They introduced a, a modernized version known as the VZ61E. It would have polymer pistol grips and a few other slightly modernized features. It didn't get much success. They made a few thousand between about 93 and 94, but they, they were just obsolete, really. They also tried making a semi-auto version as the CZ91. That being 32. It wasn't successful mostly because of domestic laws in Czechoslovakia, then becoming Czech Republic in Slovakia. They revisited the idea of the VZ64, VZ65, applying the new VZ61E modernizations and renaming them as CZ82 for the Makarov and CZ83 for the 380 version, but again, no real takers. So they were trying to make this a successful design by the standards of the early 90s in the fall of communism. But while people liked the gun, it just wasn't up to date. It was a design from the late 50s and there were a lot of surplus guns on the market and the submachine gun's position was kind of becoming dubious in, in that era, especially with body armor becoming more and more common after the first Gulf War. But they were trying. And that leads to a lot of what will happen next. By the way, I brought out a couple of holsters. This is the standard belt holster, fully flapped. It doesn't hold anything except the gun itself. And here is the shoulder holster, more for kind of under the jacket concealed carry. Again, it just holds the gun. It's got more of an open top with just a flap. And I just thought I'd share. I love the smell of actual leather. This is kind of a pig skin. This is more of a cowhide, but it's kind of neat. They also made versions of these holsters for the VZ-50 and VZ-70 pistols. That said, even though the Scorpion VZ-61 had not found success with new customers, it still had a lot of use in the Czech military and the Czech police systems and was still very common in Yugoslavia. It had even been purchased in small numbers by the Russian Spetsnaz and other communist allies. And 
if I don't say it, someone will bring it up in the comments. Yes, quite a few did find their way into the hands of uh, 1970s terrorists. Terrorists, again, liking its very small size, high rate of fire, and just, frankly, intimidation factor. So unfortunately, it has a little bit of a negative history. But then again, what gun does not, unfortunately? It's not the gun, it's the wielder. All right, so that is the VZ-61 Scorpion during the Communist era. So now we move in to the Czech Republic era and privatization of CZ and the EVO-3 Scorpion. So where does this fit in? How in the hell does it relate to that gun? And what happened to the EVO-2 or the Scorpion-2? Well, that's a story in and of itself. Oh, one thing I didn't mention, might as well just mention it here. For the, uh, Makarov version, we have two types of 20 round mag, straight, originally black, later clear. They would not do a 10 for either this or the 380, they would instead use those waffle mags in uh, their 20 rounds only. Sorry, I didn't mention it earlier. Alrighty, so where did this come in? Well, the idea of doing a Scorpion in 9 by 19, which this is in, the Luger cartridge, today NATO cartridge, really dated back to the original designer He did the VZ-68 prototype. This was essentially a scaled up VZ-64, often fitted with a wooden stock, having a larger receiver, a more massive bolt to handle the more powerful cartridge. I don't know much about it because it was never really made available, it was just done as a prototype. Again, he would pass away a few short years later, and other attempts to do other chambers for the Scorpion never really succeeded, so it was shelved. However, 90s rolls around, as I said, CZ is becoming privatized, looking to how to make some money. Tried the VZ-61E, as well as the CZ-82 and 83. This didn't work, so in the late 90s, they began to revisit the VZ-68, naming it now as the CZ Scorpion 9x19. They would apply the modernizations to begin with, the more modern polymer furniture. They would introduce a Picatinny rail. I think it was originally a Weaver rail, then Picatinny compatible in 2003 and in 2005 they really released the the quintessential final product in the scorpion 9 mil which would be our gen 2 at this point it would have the picatinny rail it would have a redesigned buttstock polymer grip with a, with a more, more ergonomic angle it would have a threaded barrel it would still have that picatinny rail and it would just have other updates and be offered as a package with uh, a sound suppressor as an option, a tactical light, uh, lasers, anything attached to it. Just trying to make it a more modern gun. It was actually a pretty good gun. However, it just wasn't successful. Luckily for them, this started to come along. This is actually a Slovakian design first seen in proto, early prototype form in 2004, after the failure of the Scorpion II, we'll call it, the Scorpion 9mm, CZ became interested in the design, and by 2007 had purchased all rights to it and continued to develop it. One of the major developments was going to modern polymer mags, a generally more polymer, modern construction style, adding more rails, so on and so forth. 
It also benefited from some feedback from the Czech military, who took a look, gave suggestions. However, when CZ first introduced this in 2009 at a trade show, international trade show in Bruno, it was targeted at export markets, export customers, so on and so forth. There wasn't a lot of effort towards the Czech military. So what do we have here? Well, even though it is the third evolution, the Evo 3, the military version known as the 3A1, it is very different. It's a blowback design, still firing from a closed bolt, still with the bolt hold open, like the original. We have a release. Obviously, the caulking system is very much inspired by an HK. The design, all that, is its own thing. Polymer shell reminds me a lot of the HK UMP. We have a 7.8 inch barrel, threaded 18 millimeter. We have a forearm here that can be removed. It has Picatinny rails on it, on all sides. We have a long top pick rail with iron sides clamped on. We have an adjustable pistol grip. We have an ambidextrous mag release, kind of HK Walther style. The military version has a four-way selector, safe, one-shot semi, three-round burst, and full auto. We have multiple sling attachment points using hook style. We have a folding stock. Now this is a generation two folder. The original ones weren't metal back here. They were polymer. This folds to the side. This one will have the magnet. Early ones would not necessarily. Stock is adjustable, three positions. And kind of harkening back to the original Scorpion, it is also removable on a dovetail. Let's see if I can do it here, guys. There we go. With the spring loaded button. Da, 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 da. See? Now it's interesting. So, this could be as technically a pistol, even the military version. Now, if you remember the original Scorpion was technically a PDW, but they didn't have a name for it, so it was a submachine gun, or at most a submachine pistol. This was initially marketed by CZ as a PDW, because in the 21st century, those were kind of the only submachine gun types being successful. And it's really more of a full-size submachine gun. It's very much like a, um, you know, size of an Uzi MP5 Sterling Sten in that range. So, the first one was, they, they were both kind of marketed wrong initially, but people get the idea. Standard magazine capacity would be 30 cartridges, 30 rounds, and polymer, translucent magazines, kind of like the late production for the 380 and Makarov. Double stack, double feed, and we even have a very similar bolt hold open system in the back here. The major difference being we actually have a release now. So the mags are, in a way, kind of similar. Here's a typical mag pouch. We also had a compact 20 round mag, if that was needed, kind of more in the PDW guys. It's a very short mag for being 20. Even the 30s are actually quite short, but uh, put it in the gun. See, it's, uh, it does not hang down much at all. Disassembly is very easy, kind of like with the original. We have a captive takedown pin here. Just push it out to the side. Where am I at here, guys? There we go. This housing drops off. Cock your bolt back. is out here. Trigger group is self-contained. Pistol grip is here. Your bolt is where you see it. This just comes 
back and out here. And as you see, we're still firing from a closed bolt, even in the military, and it is just a massive bolt for 9x19. We also have an out of battery safety here on both the military and the civilian versions. Once you take the trigger pack and the bolt out, you just have a shell. It's all polymer with metal reinforcing when and where necessary, making these a very modern style of construction. Also, they have proven to be highly reliable. And if you remember, I said originally, get this in there, guys. There we go. CZ wasn't targeting the Czech military. However, in 2010, the Czech military decided it wanted to try these out. The De Ministry of Defense would order about 500 initially. And that order has been increased several times over the last seven years. So these have ended up in Czech military service. They were officially adopted. Interestingly, the Czech army never officially adopted, or at least for standard issue, the original VZ-61. However, the uh, EVO 3A1, the submachine gun version again, is official Czech military hardware. It's actually very interesting to have a submachine gun totally new, not an old design revisited, but a totally new design for the 21st century. Most manufacturers have given up on the subgun because as I said, it's just not that common or popular now. You'll see a few PDW types being purchased, like the P90, sometimes the HK MP7, but that's really about it. But, I guess because there was a void in the market, and because a lot of old Cold War era subguns were starting to wear out, the Scorpion has been quite successful. I think more so than CZ originally anticipated. It's just a good, simple, dependable gun. Very modular and modern. It feels well built. It's not especially light, but it's not especially heavy. Because of the polymer construction, it is quite all weatherproof. It does have a cold hammer forged chrome line barrel, so very good high round count barrel. Put any lights, lasers, majiggers you want on there because of all the rails. The controls are ambidextrous. The only one that's not is the uh, bolt release and the uh, mag catch safety, both ambi. It's just proven to kind of be a runaway success and it kind of came out of nowhere. And is a very fitting, if not direct, at least spiritual successor to the VZ-61. And it does have a few cues that kind of harken back to it. So, just to make things complete, as I said, this is the semi-auto EVO 3 S1. CZ would introduce the pistol form in 2015 to the American market, and then the carbine form about a year later. They would also sell these in a few other places that would allow civilians to have such things. As for the 61, it got a new lease on life. Bruno, CZ, would sell the design, give all the equipment and rights to D-Technic, and they would start offering the semi-auto SA VZ-61 pistol around 2006. This would originally just be in 32. Actually, the first ones would come in by century and they were really expensive. But at least they did come with mags and holster and mag pouch. Now the early ones were not threaded in the back for an adapter or a stock for SBR. However, around 2011, D-Technic would have a name change to check small arms and really try to widen its appeal to other markets. 
and it would begin to introduce versions in 380 and 9x18 Makarov. And these are still in production today along with the 32. They also do the polymer grips now. They come pre-threaded from the factory. And they are doing a version with the rail as well as a threaded barrel version like this one here. Again, more for info on the sim autos and what we've done here to make this one into a quote carbine and that one into a brace pistol, check out our other video. But these are still in production today and the price has come down pretty significantly since the days of the Century Arms import. Currently, check Point USA in Knoxville, Tennessee is the importer for those and CZ USA is the importer for the Evo 3 series. They also do the A1 for law enforcement and government use so they do import the full auto for those allowed to have it. All of these guns exhibit excellent fit and finish as you would expect from the Czech Republic and are really cool relics in this case from the Cold War and it's just really nice to see a modern subcaliber pistol or carbine that's a truly new design and these are actually very affordable at least compared to what else is out there the various HK clones or the uh, the MPX and a lot of the AR-15s and 9 are, are quite a bit pricier. And it really offers something. It's a practical, military-grade, durable gun. It's not just a semi-auto thrown together for the commercial market. Well, again, we had not really done a check VZ Scorpion video. So hope these two videos kind of cover it. <laughs> Surely they at least got you somewhere there. We do have full videos on the VZ-52 and the VZ-58 rifles, and a video on the VZ-23, 24, 25, 26 full-size submachine gun family. So if interested, please check those out. If you have any questions or comments, we'd welcome them below. If you liked the video, you know the drill. We'd appreciate it if you could click like. And if you'd like to help support us, get to the range a little more often, please check out the link to our Patreon page. This is Misha. And please tune in again soon for hopefully more interesting content. We'll catch you then.